What's up guys, XM360 here, and in today's video I'm going to be reviewing what is the most powerful laser I've gotten my hands on to date. It's going to be the Sanwu Silver Series 470 nanometer 4 watt laser. So this is a beast of a laser, it comes in at $410 with the optional grid handle which I did opt for. Um, and they, they sell it in a bunch of different other colors and uh, powers you can see right here. It goes all the way up to 7 watts. Uh, you can get that in 445 with the cheapest option being the 405 nanometer um, 1 watt model which is $190. So the weight on this one is 600 grams. The housing is nickel copper alloy full metal uh, with a 40 millimeter copper heat sink. It comes with a one year warranty and they advertise that the duty cycle is one minute on 90 seconds off but that page it says right next to it it says 7 watt 455 nanometer which I'm guessing is a typo for 445 nanometer but I don't know if that just applies to that one particular model of this laser so I am going to do some testing with the duty cycle myself throughout this video. And one other thing I'm not quite sure of is the exact wavelength on this one. Uh, the website lists it as 470 nanometer 4 watt but when I reached out to Sanwu to talk about the diode used in this one they said that there wasn't a whole lot of information on the diode other than that it was an N465 4 watt diode uh, probably coming from Nakia so that's what's leading me to believe that this is maybe a 465 so we're gonna say it's either 465 nanometer or 470 nanometer um, I'll put a link to the diode if I can get one down below in the description. I unfortunately do not have a spectrometer to test the wavelength myself. I just have an LPM for the power readings. I'm hoping to eventually get a spectrometer in the future and if I do get one I will be testing all of my current lasers in my collection. So this right here is the laser itself. comes in two pieces like this. It's fairly long. Uh, because it does have to house those two 18650B batteries. Um, right away, you can feel that there is a, a very considerable amount of weight to this host and this housing. Uh, feels very solid. Like I said, the construction's full metal, uh, copper, nickel, alloy, I believe I said. And yours might not look exactly like this because I did pay that additional $10 to get the grooves and the grid handle at the very top of the laser. So if you don't pay the additional $10, yours will be a bit more smooth looking like this one. I personally think that the extra $10 is worth it because I think the grid handle and the grooves, I think they look really nice. Uh, this laser also has a little O-ring right here at the center where this laser connects together. And I got the multi-operation mode one, so this one's supposed to have low power mode, half power, strobe, full power, SOS mode, and a safety lock. And the, the button, the one button on this laser is on the very bottom. That turns it on. You press it all the way to turn it on, and then you do like little half clicks to cycle through the modes and use the passcode if you put it into safety lock mode. I'm going to talk more about that when I have the batteries in the laser. And I also wanted to show you guys right here the accessories that came with mine. Now, my product here was kind of like a review package sent out by Sanwu for the purpose of me creating a product review for it. So I can't necessarily say what exactly comes in the package when you complete a full purchase, but I would, um, I would assume it's very similar to what I have here. I got the charger. I have your standard um, generic little star caps that come with a lot of different lasers. I also have these two little uh, cosmetic attachments to attach to the top of the laser that just give it a cool, more um, modern or aggressive look. I'll show you guys what those look like on the laser in just a moment. And the laser itself does have threads on the very top to screw in attachments. And then it comes with the two batteries that it runs on. It runs on both of them at the same time. They are 18650B batteries. And these are just the slightest bit longer than your standard 18650s. Um, all the 18650s I have personally are a little bit shorter than these, so there are some compatibility issues there. So looking at the laser, we have it broken down here. The two batteries go in with the positive end facing the tip of the laser and the negative end facing the tail of the laser where the button is. And they both go in in the same direction. Now, Sanwu does advertise that this has reverse polarity uh, protection, so 
if you screw up the polarity of these and you insert them the wrong way it's not going to damage the laser there are protections in place and i have tested this myself and it didn't cause any damage to the laser now there's also another location where you can break down this laser and it's right near the top and you can unscrew it up here and I believe that they have the two locations to unscrew it so you can use different types of batteries that are a little bit different sized. Uh, their website has this image here that makes it look like you can also use instead of two 18650s you can use two 18350s which are a bit shorter. Um, I'm just going to be using the standard 18650s that come with this one but if you were to use those this is where you would break down the laser and then you would just pull out uh, the, the middle piece so that the laser becomes shorter. And another thing I haven't really mentioned much yet is that this one also has an adjustable focus. And that one's located, if you're looking at this little um, this little handle right here, it's located on the third notch down. You're going to see like a little darker area. That's where it's separated. And the top part of this, you twist it to adjust the focus in and out and create your focal point and do some really good burning, which we're going to do later on in the video. Now, if you opt for the basic version of this laser without the grid handle and the grooves, it might look a little different, but that one should have an adjustable focus uh, close to the top as well. And then these little attachments, they just screw onto the very top here and they give it a very cool look. This one with all the holes in it actually has another set of threads on the top of it. So once you attach it, you can then attach another attachment onto this attachment. Um, not really sure why you would really need to do that, but you know you could make some kind of weird configurations just like this one if you really wanted to and then this other little attachment just gives it a more um, I, don't, I don't know what the word for it is it's that very common laser look that you see with so many other companies uh, the wicked lasers spider s3 line has this kind of look on the top of it and so does the Thor series of lasers um, I don't I'm not really a big fan of it I kind of like it without this but uh, you can also attach the little star caps to the top. Those are pretty common. You get those with tons of lasers, even laser 303s. Um, those are pretty self-explanatory. You just attach them, and once you use the laser, you get like a galaxy effect. It spreads the light out into a bunch of little dots. So I have the batteries inside the laser, and I'm now going to show you guys the different modes and what it looks like in different lighting levels. Mine was shipped to me in safety lock mode, so... To take it out of safety lock mode, you press the button on the bottom all the way down, and then you need to do like a little half press of the button five times within the first three seconds after you've pressed it all the way. And then it says wait another two seconds, and if the laser switches to strobe mode, then your laser is unlocked. So I had to go through that process when I first had it. And then if you ever want to like lock it up again, you can do that as well. I'm going to show you guys how to do that. The first mode you guys saw right there was the SOS mode. It's like three blinks and then some faster blinks. And then it goes to the off mode, which just does like a one milliwatt output. Uh, then it goes to the low power mode, then to the half power, then to the strobe mode, and then to full power mode. And if you wanted to put this laser back into safety lock mode, what you would do is while the laser is completely off, you're going to turn it on and then you're going to rapidly do the half clicks three times within three seconds and it will switch to strobe mode for like a second or two and then it will go into safety lock mode and you'll have to do the five half clicks again to get it unlocked. So I'm now going to show you guys what this looks like in some different lighting levels. The first one being indoors in a normal lit room and I'm going to go through my usual safety precautions here. You need some serious laser safety glasses with this one and I'll link some down below. If you're even if you if you're gonna get this laser and you're gonna use it inside your home, only use it if you're pointing it at like a fireplace or um, like a concrete wall or a brick wall. And even then, you gotta be very careful. Make sure the laser's not focused into the point that it's gonna burn. This thing is a seriously powerful laser, and it can easily burn down your home if used the wrong way. Um, now, moving to an outdoor daytime setting here. You can actually, if you're looking down the axis of the laser in person, not just on camera, but in person, you can kind of see the beam in daylight, which is pretty, pretty impressive. Now, this one does have some pretty significant divergence. You can see that long rectangular beam down there on the wall. It's like over a foot long at this distance of a couple hundred feet here. Now, this is operating with the standard lens, and I'm going to talk more about the lenses in a little bit, but you can improve your divergence a bit with some upgraded lenses. 
but I'm now going to move on to showing you guys what this looks like at night. And this thing is just crazy, crazy bright. Again, you really got to be careful where you aim this. And this brings up some, some warnings too. If you live in a dry region like out west or some parts of the south, be extremely careful using this outdoors in the dry season. To be completely honest, if you live in one of those states like California where you have a lot of forest fires, I wouldn't even advise you use this outdoors during the dry season because there's just too much of a risk. I, I wouldn't advise it. Um, I live in a very wet region. Uh, we don't have any forest fires here, so that's not really a risk factor for me. Now, you got to obviously operate this with extreme caution at nighttime, especially because this thing's crazy visible. Your neighbors are going to see it. Everybody's going to see it. So try to keep it on your own property for the most part. Don't aim it at any vehicles, any living creatures. Don't create a nuisance with it, you know. Pretty common sense stuff, but, you know, people will go and do some stupid things. You'll see it on the news. Um, so I'm going to measure this one with uh, LPM that I've recently gotten reviewed. I'll put a link down below in the description of the review I did on this LPM if you're interested in that. Uh, but to, to make things a little faster here, I did a couple of different readings with this laser at different times. Um, all with the battery fully charged. And I got readings of about 3.2 to 3.3 watts. And that that's very high. It's definitely lower than the 4 watt advertised uh, power output. But I believe... The explanation to that is in the in the lenses. Um, they, they give a nice little explanation of the lenses they offer. So what I'm using here in this video is the standard lens, but you can get for an additional fee of, I believe it's like $10, you can get a G2 or a G7 lens. And this explains uh, the differences between the lenses, but basically the standard lens is running at about 70% uh, power efficiency. So if you have a four watt laser, going through uh, theoretically it should come down to around 2.8 watts because that's 70 percent um, now in this case we have a bit more at 3.2 3.3 but i think that's where we're losing the power is because we have a four watt diode going through that standard lens and we're losing a bit of power here so what you could do is you could pay the additional fee here to get a G2 or a G7 to up your power outputs here. Um, they do offer higher percentages of power efficiency. And what I have here for you guys is the beautiful bathroom fog room comparison of the wavelengths. The laser on the bottom is the one I'm reviewing here, the 465 or 470 nanometer. And then the one on the top is a 2.8 watt 445 nanometer laser. Now I am using a metal sheet on the wall to prevent my walls from burning because that's very, very important. And the camera really doesn't do this comparison justice because the, the 445 always comes up looking purple on camera. But in reality, that's more of just like a solid, almost kind of like a dark blue or a normal shade of blue. And then the 465, 470 is more of like an aqua blue. Um, I tried to do my best in MS Paint here to show you guys the colors that I'm seeing in person, but there is definitely a notable difference here, and the 465, 470 is going to be notably more visible and look brighter because it is closer to the peak visibility color of 555 nanometers. So the further you keep going up towards 555, the more visibility you're going to get at the same power output. And I am now going to do some burning here. Um, I have a stone or a metal backdrop to prevent my walls again from burning. I have the laser focused in. I have my laser safety glasses on and a sink full of water. And you guys can see this laser is lighting up these matches instantly. And even the wood of the match is just no, it has no chance. It's lighting on fire, which is... You see in some very high powered lasers it's able to light the wooden part of the match on fire but not too often so this thing's pretty strong. Um, I got a little piece of cardboard here from toilet paper and it just it's it's lighting that on fire as well. I'm getting little flames here and yeah completely lights it on fire with no issues. So as you guys could probably already tell this is a pretty serious laser. I got a piece of wood here and again um, i'm not sure if you guys are able to see it on the camera but i'm getting like little little bursts of flames here it's not lighting it igniting it completely on fire but i'm getting like little little sparks of flame here which are probably getting lost in the light but this thing's 
crazy powerful. Um, when you get this thing focused in, you can burn pretty much anything. I got a little piece of black plastic here, and it just makes little work of that going through it in seconds. And earlier, when I was pointing it at the bricks in my fireplace, I was even seeing little bits of smoke coming off of that when I focused in. It was even burning the bricks in my home. So these these lasers are pretty serious stuff. You got to be very, very careful with them. And what you just saw me burn right there was electric tape. And the next thing I have right here is a little piece of black paper. And it just it just lights the paper on fire like instantly. This thing is crazy powerful. So I'm now going to move on to the reviewing aspect of this. And I like this laser a lot. The power was great, even if it was a bit under spec. I thought that it was extremely powerful, great at burning. The focus feature worked great. The beam was perfectly aligned. There was no crookedness to it. The color was very good as well. Um, one thing I did notice was that there was a bit of light spread. Now this was on the standard lens, so if you were working with one of the upgraded lenses, they can give you some better beam divergence and would probably clean up that light spread a bit. I also had like a little issue where the small little plastic rings peeled off of the top of the batteries. Didn't affect the battery performance in any way. Um, and another issue I kind of had with the batteries too is that they're an odd size. They're a little bit longer than your standard 18650s. So if you try to use a normal 18650 in this host, it won't work because the two ends just aren't long enough to make a full connection. I also sometimes had a little bit of trouble doing the half clicks. Sometimes I would try to do the half click to move on to the next mode and it would kind of just stay stuck on the same mode. Wasn't a huge issue and I was able to navigate the modes fairly easy. And as for the duty cycle, um, going from a completely cold start, I found that the laser became kind of like too hot to handle. It came, became very, very warm to the touch after two minutes of usage. I would then sit it down for a couple of minutes to cool down and after that when I would power it up again I would get maybe a minute and a quarter maybe a minute and a half before it got too hot to touch again and I'd have to give it another break so that was kind of the duty cycle I was working with and I found that to be fairly reasonable um, it didn't heat up too fast as far as the price goes I thought that was pretty reasonable I mean it could come down just a little bit but I thought it was pretty fair uh, I love the host on this one. I thought it looked really, really cool, and I thought it functioned very well. And typically, I have very good experiences with my Sanwu lasers and the hosts. I think they make a very good quality product. So all in all, I'd give this one a very good review. Definitely not a beginner level laser. This is some very, very high powered stuff, and I would you have to have the proper laser eyewear and laser experience. I would not recommend this as an entry level laser, but once you get a bit of laser knowledge and experience definitely something i think that's worth buying so i'll put a link down below to this silver series laser and if you guys have any questions leave them in the comments below if you're new to my channel hit that subscribe button for lots of awesome laser videos just like this and as always guys thank you for watching from xm360